Hello everyone, welcome to Shunya IS and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about cabinet committees. Now the cabinet committees are very important aspect of uh, the union executive. However, direct questions are a little rarely expected. But still, it is our responsibility that we complete this particular chapter in a very detailed manner so that we can handle any and every kind of question that comes up. The good thing about this particular topic is that uh, there is no uncertainty or there is no interpretation based questions that can be asked. It's a pretty straightforward topic. Okay, so with this, let's just start. Before moving forward, let me just tell you how we go forward with these lectures. Our goal with these lectures is to make final revision easy for you guys, right? Because even if right now you do these MCQs, there is no guarantee that you will be remembering these MCQs one week before the examination. Okay, so for final exam, uh, final examination and uh, your revision one week before the prelims, my goal is that we make very short crisp notes, super short notes out of every class. No matter how many notes you have made already, these notes are going to be different because they will be, they will actually be the notes which you will touch upon when you will uh, start revising finally, right? And these should be the notes that you have seen tens of times. Uh, so, while the class is going on, make your notes in A4 size sheets, lose A4 size sheets so that you can compile them later. And... Uh, Always, always make sure that you are concising your notes in a very, very short area. So, for example, the notes for cabinet committees should not be more than 1.5 page. The note for prime minister, I told you, should not be more than one page. And uh, doing all of this, you will narrow down all your notes to 30 to 40 pages, which you can keep on revising again and again, right? So this is uh, this is my goal for you. Now, before moving forward, let me just tell you a few things about the cabinet committees. By name, it's very clear that it has something related to do with the cabinet, right? Now, the cabinet committees, they are extra constitutional bodies. They are extra constitutional bodies. Are they unconstitutional? No. They are not unconstitutional. Any un Anything which is unconstitutional cannot survive. Okay. So, they are extra constitutional bodies and they are different from parliamentary committees. Okay. Cabinet committees are a part of union legislature. You don't need to write this union, leg uh, sorry, union executive. You don't need to write this uh, union executive, but just try to understand what I'm saying. Okay, the parliamentary committees, which we say department related standing committees, etc. Those are different. Those, uh, th uh, they check the bill which have been uh, presented in the parliament and they will give suggestions like uh, the three Nyaya Samhitas that were presented, the IPC, the CRPC and the Indian Ev Evidence Act. The committees have given their recommendations on it and now the bills have been withdrawn and they will be uh, presented again. So, these kind of things I am saying that they are the job of the parliamentary committee. Cabinet committees are very powerful. First of all, they work very closely with the cabinet. Do they have only cabinet ministers as, the, as their members? No. Any minister or any expert can be a member. So, please write this. Write this that they are extra constitutional. Also write that any minister, any MP, any expert can be a member of the cabinet committees. So this is very important because the job is to actually frame the policies. So if you're a very senior IS, a senior IS officer and you are an expert in something, uh, then you also might become a part of the cabinet committee, etc. Right? Now, if not under the constitution, what is the basis under which these cabinet committees function? These cabinet committees function under the rules of procedure of the respective house. Rules of procedure of the house. So, this is very important. 
Another thing about cabinet committees that you have to remember is that they are of two types. There is standing cabinet committees, that is permanent standing uh, cabinet committees. And then there is ad hoc committees. It is very clear by the name itself. Ad hoc committees are temporary committees. They are set up on the base on the uh, need basis and then they are dissolved. Standing committees are more powerful. They are permanent committees and they keep on legislating on the policy throughout the year. So that means that uh, two types of committees and if you ask, if you are asked that is there any article about the cabinet committees, so there is no article because they are under the rule of procedure. Another thing, please write down who sets up these cabinet committees, who sets up these cabinet committees. It is, is it the president of India? No, it is the prime minister of India. Prime minister sets up, okay sets up these cabinet committees. So this is a very important fact to remember because generally the prime minister does not appoint anyone. Everyone is appointed by the president, etc. So this is a detail that you need to remember. Another thing that you need to remember is that the membership of the cabinet committee varies from three members to eight members. So these are very small bodies who will keep deliberating on very um, pointed issues. For example, Cabinet Committee on Security, right, headed by the Prime Minister of India. Uh, they will be deliberating on very crucial issues. Write another detail that um, the Cabinet Committees, generally they can uh, have various chairpersons, etc. But if the PM is member, if the prime minister is a member of the cap of a particular cabinet committee, then the PM becomes chairperson. Invariably, PM is chairperson. This is just because of uh, seniority, you know, uh, seniority and this uh, order of precedence that if the prime minister is a part of any committee, any cabinet committee, the prime minister is supposed to head that cabinet committee. Okay, so that is there. Then another thing. Is the decision of the committee binding on the cabinet? No. Decision of the committee is not binding on the cabinet. And uh, we all know that cabinet word has been used in the Indian constitution. We have talked about it. So it is not binding. And uh, another thing is that the cabinet can review the decisions, uh, the suggestions given by the cabinet committees. Does that mean that the cabinet can actually send it to judicial review or you know judiciary can interfere in it no it is very these kind of decisions and these kind of committees are very top secret committees in the sense they talk about very crucial issues so the discussions that they have they cannot be out in the public right so cabinet reviewing the decision of cabinet committee and judiciary reviewing the decision of cabinet committee are two very, very different things. I hope you understand that. Okay. Then uh, write down what are the cabinet committees that are existing right now. Okay. The important cabinet committees that are existing right now. There is cabinet committee on political affairs. You can just write down the names and leave some space after each one of them. Uh, or you can make each one of them in a small bubble uh, like this and you can take some features because I'll tell you some features as we go down the questions. So cabinet committee on political affairs, then cabinet committee on economic affairs is also there. These are the permanent, these are the standing cabinet committees, permanent uh, cabinet committees. Fine. Then there is the appointment commission. That who is going to be, for example, the CAG, who is going to be the uh, various people who have to be appointed, right? So, Appointments Commission. Then, Cabinet Committee on Security. Very, very important committee. Every and any decision related to our security, internal security, external security, atomic energy, all of these things, right? Then, there is Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs. Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs. 
Then there is committee on accommodation. Which dignitary will get which accommodation, these kind of things. These things are also very important. Okay, it's not that they are uh, not important, right? Then cabinet committee on investment and growth. This is a recent committee. Investment and growth. Recently made committee. And a cabinet committee on employment and skill development. Who makes these committees? It is the Prime Minister of India. So there is no uh, there is no bar on uh, making the cabinet committees and dissolving earlier cabinet committees. Like earlier, there used to be a cabinet committee on World Trade Organization, specific tra a cabinet committee on issues related to World Trade Organization, right? So that is there. Now, if I were to ask you or if I were to tell you, which are the most important cabinet committees? There are three cabinet committees which are most important. The primary one is cabinet committee on political affairs, where all the mini decisions or all the decisions are taken in a mini parliamentary form. Uh, and uh, it is also, it is a very, very important and most powerful committee, if I were to say, whatever political decision is going to be taken. The second is Economic Affairs Committee. It is very, very, very important. Then Appointments Committee is also very important simply because uh, you, you uh, tend to be controlling the entire government and the entire system through the people you appoint, right? So that way Appointments Committee is also very, very, very important. And um, then we have our... Parliamentary Affairs Committee. So, Political Affairs Committee and Parliamentary Affairs Committee both are very important. In fact, Political Affairs Committee is so important that it is called Super Cabinet. Right? It has 3 to 8 members. Hmm? Has 3 to 8 members. So, um, it is a very small body and it is called a Super Cabinet. Okay? Then, Please note down that Political Affairs Committee, Economic Affairs Committee and Appointments Committee, these are headed by the Prime Minister of India. Okay, these are headed by the Prime Minister of India. And these are the most important ones. That, that's why you have to mention. That's why you have to mention them in your notes. This committee, the Committee on Parliamentary Affairs, this is not headed by the Prime Minister of India. This is headed by the Home Minister of India. So just note down this distinction. And now that you have written all these things, let's just go on to the questions. The first question, consider the following statements regarding cabinet committees in India. Cabinet committees are explicitly mentioned in the Indian constitution. Ad hoc committees are of permanent nature. The composition of cabinet committees in India typically consists of only cabinet ministers. How many of the above statements are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? Very easy question. They are not explicitly mentioned, not explicitly mentioned in the Indian constitution. They are formed through the rules of procedure. Ad hoc committees are permanent in nature. This is absolutely nonsense. I have already told you, UPSC can give you, sometimes give you very stupid statements and test your common sense that whether you will have the courage to actually acknowledge and make it incorrect, right? So this is incorrect. Then the composition of cabinet committees in India typically consists of only cabinet ministers. No, I have already told you. The cabinet ministers, the other ministers, even the MPs, even the experts, anyone can be included. So, this means that none of the given statements are correct. I hope you understand. Uh, now, let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statements regarding the cabinet committees in India. Cabinet committees are extra constitutional bodies. They are established under the rules of business. All cabinet committees are of permanent nature and cabinet committees are set up by the president of India. How many of the above statements are correct? So cabinet committees are extra constitutional bodies is absolutely correct. So please make this correct and they are established under the rules of business. All cabinet committees are of permanent nature? No. 
This is incorrect. And generally, most of the times, 90 out of 100 times, this all base statement will be incorrect. Okay. So this becomes incorrect. Some are ad hoc in nature also. Cabinet committees are set up by president. No, they are set up by the prime minister of India. Very powerful bodies. Okay. So here only one statement is correct. I hope this is very clear. Moving on to the next question. Consider the following. Now these are committee specific questions. So just uh, note down the facts related to these committees with the committee name that you have written. Okay. Okay. Consider the following statements regarding the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs. The head of the committee is the finance minister. It reviews rural development and the public distribution system. And the committee deals with industrial licensing policies. See, uh, we have already discussed about it. But uh, just because it's a committee on economic affairs does not mean finance minister will head it. Okay, it is the prime minister who heads it and in fact prime minister heads most of the cabinet committees so this becomes incorrect it reviews rural development public distribution system this is correct you can write it down and deals with industrial licensing policy even this is correct okay so only two you have to understand that economic affairs it's a very very wide domain and anywhere where governments uh, governments money is being spent the money of the public is being spent by the government then economic affairs committee will have a say over there now for example when it was uh, it was said that manrega funds are to be slashed then it was economic affairs committee that must have taken the decision right so you can note this note this down moving on consider the following statements regarding the cabinet committee on political affairs it deals with all policy matters pertaining to domestic and foreign affairs Matters with external or internal security implications are dealt with by the Cabinet Committee on Security and it scrutinizes non-governmental business and decides which official bills and resolutions are to be presented. How many of the given statements are correct? Go one by one. First statement is pretty simple that yes, it will definitely uh, pertain to the policy matters which are domestic or foreign. Now, Matters with external or internal security implications, if only this much would have been written, then it would have been wrong. But the second statement has clearly mentioned that they are dealt by Cabinet Commission on Security, Cabinet Committee on Security. Although the Cabinet or uh, the question is on Cabinet Committee on Political Affairs, but the second statement is asking about Cabinet Committee on Security. So the second statement is also correct. That internal external security is dealt by cabinet committee on security. Now third one, why would the committee scrutinize non-government business? Because it will, non-government business will not be scrutinized because cabinet committee is always into the government business, right? What kind of decisions the government is taking? It is a part, I told you, it is a part of the union executive. So, why will it scrutinize non-government business? So, because of this, the statement becomes incorrect and only two statements are correct. I hope you understand that. Moving on, consider the following statements regarding the Cabinet Committee on Security. It deals with issues relating to atomic energy. It considers cases involving capital defense expenditure more than 1000 crore. And the head of the committee is Union Home Minister. How many of the above statements are correct? Go one by one. The first statement is generic that anything atomic energy is a security related matter. So definitely the cabinet committee on security will be legislating uh, which will be uh, talking about it. So yes, this is correct. Now this one is a factual information that you can write along with your notes that it considers the cases which are more than 1000 crore. So very important. Then head of the committee is union home minister. No, it is the prime minister of India. Okay. So please note this down. Moving forward, consider the following statements regarding the cabinet committee on accommodation. It can consider the allotment of government accommodation from general pool to members of parliament. 
The committee is composed of cabinet ministers from various ministries with one of them as the head and it determines the guidelines for the allotment of government accommodation. How many of the given statements are correct? Now see, because of one specific statement, you should not be letting go of two statements that are very generic in nature and they have to be correct. So for example, the first statement and the third statement. These are so generic in nature that it is very much possible that they will be correct. That cabinet committee on accommodation by name is on accommodation and it is supposed to determine the guidelines. So this is correct. Second statement is actually incorrect. It is headed by the home minister. And in these kind of questions, you know, when you are asked whether uh, this is headed by home minister or you are specifically given a statement, UPSC has that tendency to just flip a fact. It is very easy for them to just flip a fact and test whether you know it or not. Okay. So, uh, second is incorrect. You can write cabinet committee on accommodation is headed by the home minister. So, that's all for this particular class. Now, let me just tell you what I always tell you. We are done with the topic of cabinet committees. We have made hardly, I think, one third of a page you would have uh, filled or half a page you would have filled with the notes that I have given you. So, your job is to go to M. Lakshmi Kant to read the chapter on cabinet committees and extract any useful prelims based questions, prelim based information that is required. How will you understand which information is prelims based information and which is not? It is only when you have read and reread the previous year questions multiple, multiple times. You will get to know what kind of framing UPSC does. So, read M. Lakshmi Kant and uh, close that chapter forever. Extract the information that needs to be required for prelims, although I have given you most of it. 90% of it I have I've already given you. Uh, 5 to 10% you can extract further. And then close the chapter forever till the prelims examination. After that, if you need to uh, open the book, you might open it once for the mains examination to extract mains related information. But your job after this class has to be to close the M. Lakshmi Kant till your prelims examination because everything that you need will be with you. Okay, so that is there. So, uh, this is our approach for the this particular course that is revise entire prelim syllabus through 3000 plus MCQs. We are trying to get your revision in a proper uh, professional revision mode in the sense that your time is very precious so we don't want to waste it. So, through MCQs, we are going to make you revise everything that you need to revise for this examination, for the prelims examination. These subjects you need to uh, remember, modern history, Indian polity, geography, economy, art and culture, uh, current affairs, ancient medieval, environment ecology and science and tech. So, these are the only uh, subjects that come in the prelims examination and prelims examination is the biggest eliminator. We know that by now. So, we have designed this course in such a manner that you will be benefited out of it. And if you think your mind works better in an MCQ format, then you can uh, visit this website. You can call up this number. And we have tried to keep this course as affordable as possible, as humanly possible for us, so that everyone can afford it and everyone's preparation can be on track. Right? So that is it for today. I hope you derived some value out of this class. Don't forget to complete the assignment that I gave you. And I will see you all in the next class. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching.